Coming up on this January edition of Hawkeye News. Hawkeye News reporter Catherine Martinez is back with an update on the ROISD bond progress. Catherine checks in with Mr. Shutman with information on construction plans and a recap of the progress made in 2007. Details straight ahead. Plus, the spring semester is a time when we really need to focus on academics and deadlines that are important to us no matter what grade level we are at. This month, we check in with the Counselor's Corner for news students can use. Also, Hawkeye News reporter Jennifer Terry joins us with information and news on that Mighty Hawk Band. Director Mr. Richard Thomas was happy to inform Hawkeye News that two students from Red Oak High School earned Texas All-State Band honors this year. Find out who they were coming up later. Also, this month, Hawkeye News sports anchor Zach Toombs introduces a new segment called Five Minutes With and brings us up to date on both the Hawks and Lady Hawks soccer and basketball teams later in sports. And finally, the Hawkeye News 2008 tour dates have been set and we are now coming to a classroom near you. Also, Hawkeye News is proud to unveil its new billboard for 2008, going up across ROISD this month. Learn more about the tour and see the new billboards. I'm Leslie Rangel. And I'm Katie Stanglin. This is Hawkeye News. You're watching Hawkeye News with Katie Stanglin, Leslie Rangel, Sports with Zach Toons, plus Lexi Belote with our crime fighting reports, and more news coverage with our Hawkeye News Junior High team. Also, what's up at the WC with Chris McClure? Plus, academic and student life reports with our Hawkeye News team. Hawkeye News. Leadership you can depend on. Welcome to this first edition of Hawkeye News for January 2008. I'm Katie Stanglin. And I'm Leslie Rangel. It's good to be back in the studio after a long winter's break. The holidays are over and it's back to work. We hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas holiday and we're looking forward to a happy new year. We have a lot of great news to share. Hawkeye News has been really busy during the holiday break preparing for a new year. First, on Hawkeye News, we check back in with Catherine Martinez, who's standing by with an update on the ROISD bond progress and tells us about the business of the month. Catherine? Thanks, Katie Musley. It's getting very exciting around Red Oak ISD with the bond progress in full swing. As you mentioned at the top of our show, Mr. Shutman will join us later and he will show us what the new high school will potentially look like. Also this month, the Donut House is another great business in Red Oak who is also a sponsor of Project Success and Had It. The Donut House is a popular place for students and staff to stop in on the way to school for a nice morning treat. Later, we go inside and meet the owner. That and much more coming up later. Katie and Leslie, back to you. Thanks, Catherine. Now halfway through his freshman year, our West Campus reporter Chris McClure continues to bring us some important information from the West Campus. This month, Chris has information for those freshmen that are about to be old enough to get behind the wheel. Chris? Thanks, Katie and Leslie. You're right. Most students turn 15 during their freshman year, and along with that birthday come thoughts of driving. This month, I'm going to give you the information you need to be prepared to get your driver's license next year on your 16th birthday. Learn the first step to getting your permit. Katie and Leslie, back to you. Thanks, Chris. I'm sure your fellow classmates will be very interested. Also this month, we begin an extended on-location segment of the Elementary Intermediate Report. Joining us now from Wooden Elementary is Hawkeye News reporter Roseanne Foster, who is visiting Mrs. Schultz's first grade class with this month's update coming up later. Roseanne? 
Thanks, Katie and Leslie. Yes, I'm here in Miss Schultz's first grade class here at Wooden Elementary with my friends who've been helping me get warmed up for the morning's broadcast. We are so excited to be here, and we thank Wooden for having us. We look forward to coming to your classroom soon. Yeah! Join me later for our first elementary and intermediate report for 2008. Katie and Leslie, back to you. Thanks, Roseanne. Also back with us in 2008 is our own Hawkeye News crime anchor, Lexi Belote, who I understand has some very informative information coming up in her crime segment. And this report is one that many students can't afford to ignore. Lexi? Thanks, ladies. You're right. As teenagers, we many times think we know everything, but in doing my research for this month's crime report, I came across some pretty interesting and actually scary news on something many of us do every day, drink energy drinks. Learn what you are putting in your body and what it can do to you coming up later. Katie and Leslie, back to you. Thanks, Lexi. We can't wait to hear what you found out. It has been called one of the most entertaining nights of the year. The Project Success Drug Education Program will try to pack the cafetorium for this year's 2008 Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant. Joining us from the high school where the pageant will take place is Hawkeye News reporter Hanana Saley. Hanan? Thanks, Katie and Leslie, and hello, Red Oak ISD. Are you ready for the most fun-filled night of the year? If so, you better make plans to be at Red Oak High School on February 16th for this year's Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant that is shaping up to be one of the funniest in years with a full slate of contestants vying for the crowns this year. Also, I will have great news from Mrs. Little and the One Act Play crew all coming up in my reports later in this newscast. Katie and Leslie, back to you. Hawkeye News is committed to bringing you the great news around Red Oak ISD in our community. And we now begin our new season in 2008 with this month's top stories. To get us started this month, we look to Hawkeye News reporter Catherine Martinez with an update on the ROISD bond progress. Catherine? Thanks, Katie and Leslie. You are certainly right. It is getting very exciting around Red Oak ISD with the bond progress in full swing. To give us a first-hand view of things, we go to Mr. Shutman for this month's bond progress report, and I will be back in a few minutes with some yummy information on our business of the month. Good afternoon. It's the 24th of January, 2008, and I'm here actually on site at the brand new high school site, uh, which we will begin building hopefully in about four or five months. Uh, what our architects have put together is a three-dimensional flyby of the school as it's going to look when it's completed. So you're going to see the front of the school, the back of the school, the sides. Uh, you're going to be able to see the, the actual size of a person in comparison to what the, the height of the building is. Um, you're going to see where uh, various locations of, of different kinds of uh, projects are, such as the Fine Arts Center, the entrance to the gym, the entrance to the school, the library, the back of the cafeteria, the courtyards in between. So you get a feel for the whole entire project, which is for over 370,000 square feet of building. And it's uh, quite an exciting thing, so I hope you enjoy the three-dimensional flyby of your new Red Oak High School. If you look behind me out there, will be softball and baseball field right out there that we, at this time next year, we hope to actually be using along with tennis courts. Um, so that will actually begin as soon as possible also. Uh, to give you an update, as I said before, I think the uh, elementary project is all ready to roll. Right now we've had to move back. The actual uh, finish of, of the school is gonna occur in time for the fall of 09. Um, so we're looking at a year and a half from now, we should have that project uh, totally complete and ready to move in. And so that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, and we're moving along and next month I hope to uh, to have even some, uh, some more updates and some more information on where we are. Thanks, Mr. Shutman. Now we wanted to spotlight another great business in Red Oak, who was also a sponsor of Project Success and had it, and is a popular place for students and staff to stop in the way to school for a nice morning treat, the Donut House. Let's check it out. The Donut House opened in Red Oak in March 2005 here in the Main Street Plaza and has been a welcome addition to the community. Owners Jonathan and Ruthie Burke, who is an 8th grade teacher at Red Oak Junior High, have been great supporters of Red Oak ISD, taking out ads in many programs as well as being an official sponsor of Project Success and had it. The Donut House donates five dozen donuts for each Had It general meeting, as well as sponsoring other Project Success events. 
You can stop by and get a quick breakfast with a wide variety of donuts or special breakfast items. Uh, I feel like customer service has got to be our top priority because without the, without the customer, we're not here. If we're going to continue in business, then we've got to make sure that our customers know that when they walk through that door, it's appreciated. I mean, they have a choice for breakfast and they have a choice for where they want to go. And we feel like when you come through that door, you have chosen to be here and we want to treat you with, with respect and uh, honor you and give you a good, good product and a good service with friendly service. Everything we do, when we set up the counter, when we're cooking pigs, the extra steps we go to for sanitary or for preparation is all with our customers in mind. It's to get them in and out, make sure they get what they want, that they know that they are top priority. Yeah, you can get pigs and croissants, and right now we have our, uh, coming up this February 14th, we have our Valentine's Donuts, which uh, customers can special order, and we'll put their name on it, or love you, or hugs and kisses. Uh, we open at 5 a.m. every day, uh, except for Sundays. Sundays are 6 a.m., from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m., and Monday through Saturday is 5 a.m. to 11 a.m., and people can place a special order to, by calling us on our phone, leave a, leave a message, 972 576-5200-5200 and they can reach us that way. We would like to thank the Donut House for being such a wonderful sponsor of Red Oak ISD students and if your business would like to be a sponsor of Drug Free Red Oak ISD students you can sign up to be a corporate sponsor from our website at www.hawkeye-news.com or call the Red Oak ISD Police Department at 469-437-6836. Until next month, I'm Katherine Martinez, Hawkeye News. Back to you ladies. Thanks, Catherine. I can't wait to see the new Shields and Red Oak High School construction, even if we won't be in the school when it opens. You're right about that, but hey, we can enjoy the donut house, so I think I will be stopping by tomorrow for something good to eat on the way to school. Another new change in 2008 has taken place at Eastridge Elementary and Red Oak Intermediate School as Principal Bob Major has moved from the Red Oak Intermediate to take over his new administrative job at Eastridge and Assistant Principal Christy Watts has now taken over as Interim Principal at ROI. After many successful years leading ROI, Mr. Major was selected to take over for Ms. Sheila Strawn, who has moved from the principal's office at Eastridge to her new duties as Human Resources Director for Red Oak ISD. Ms. Strawn is now located at the Red Oak ISD Administration offices on Louise Ritter and will take over all personnel issues for the district. Ms. Watts, who began her career in Red Oak as a band director, has been serving as the assistant principal at Red Oak Intermediate for the past few years, will lead ROI until a new principal is hired to fill that position later in the year. Also, Rachel Kistner has been named the new director of special education. Sharon Graves has been named the interim principal of Red Oak Elementary. Rachel and Sharon have been leaders in our district for many years, and it's exciting to see them accept new leadership roles. They will assume their new positions on February 4th. We are happy for them as well as for Red Oak ISD as we continue to work together for the success of our students. The changes around the district have allowed ROISD to keep wonderful current staff members in key roles within the district operations, and altogether the administration, faculty, and support staff are working to move Red Oak ISD to higher heights in 2008. In other ROISD district news, the Career and Technology Department is offering community adult classes. Classes will be February 21st through March 13th. Courses will be held every Thursday night from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can learn a new skill, improve your current skills, or add talents to your lifestyle with nine different courses to choose from. For registration information and cost, please visit the ROISD website at www.redoakisd.org. Sign up today. Spreading Christmas cheer was a theme for many of our students and student organizations during the holiday season. And once again, the Red Oak High School and Junior High Hawks Against Destructive Decisions Inspiring Teens had a great time serving some of our area senior citizens. Under the student leadership of organization president Brandon Adamchek, the Hawks Against Destructive Decisions Inspiring Teens recently provided a full holiday dinner complete with chicken, ham, corn, mashed potatoes, many desserts, and much more for area senior citizens at the Red Oak Elementary Cafeteria. The organization wanted to say thank you to our area senior citizens for helping make Red Oak a great place to live and grow up. 
in the spirit of giving, our Haddock group, along with Red Oak Junior High Haddock, prepared and served this wonderful meal. It was then time to spend a couple hours with our friends at the nursing home in Red Oak, where ROJH Haddock provided gifts and all took part in visiting and singing of Christmas carols. It was a great day for all who are involved and Haddock would like to thank Brandy's Barbecue, Brookshire's, and all those who took part with this wonderful event. Congratulations to Haddock President Brandon Adamchek and all the committee members who did a great job on the event. Haddock sponsor Chief Lindsay would also like to send a special thanks to Christina Ross, who was responsible for obtaining the majority of the donations. Great job, Haddock. During the Christmas season, the apparel classes of Red Oak High School recently made blankets for the residents at Red Oak Health and Rehabilitation Center. Ms. Janet Allen says she feels that it's important for young people to see the need of giving back to our community. Ms. Allen is proud of her students not only for the way they conducted themselves, but also for the love they showed to these senior citizens. As the students departed the nursing home singing, We Wish You a Merry Christmas, they truly felt the warmth of the season, and these people may feel the warmth from the blankets made with love. Also during the holiday season, the Red Oak High School Varsity Choir took time out to do some caroling during the holidays. The choir visited all school campuses in ROISD and some local nursing homes. Debate season is well underway, putting more pressure on our team. Their most recent tournament was held in Athens, not long before the holiday break. The CX portion of the team had two teams do very well. Yesenia Torres received perfect speaker points, and along with partner Destiny LaRue went 2-1 to receive 17th place out of the 42 teams present. Spencer Blandon and Roseanne Foster also received perfect speaker points and went on to take 13th place. The LD portion of the team also provided fierce competition. Karen Lopez won all three of her rounds, received perfect speaker points, and went on to take sixth place out of the 40 Lincoln Douglas teams present. Chad Wirch also did very well, winning two of his three rounds, receiving perfect speaker points and placing eighth. With District in the near future, the debate team is planning to attend more meets this month in order to fully prepare for the competition present at District. CX District will be held on February 5th, and LD District will take place later in the year. Good luck to the team from all of us here at Hawkeye News. Special thanks to Rosie and Foster for this report. The spring semester is a time when we begin to think about things like scholarship applications, spring break, and for some of us, the reality of graduation is just hitting us as well. But it's also a time when we really need to focus on academics and deadlines that are important to us, no matter what grade level we are at the high school. So to get us up to date, let's check in with our wonderful counselor's office to see what's new from the counselor's corner. My name is Moppy Miller and I'm here to tell you a little bit that's happening in Red Oak, uh, specifically at Red Oak High School. I want to remind everybody that on Thursday, February the 7th at 7 o'clock at Red Oak Elementary, the Practical Parenting Group is sponsoring the Parent of the Year. So hope all you students nominated your parents and we'll see you there on the 7th at 7. Another thing I want to talk to you about is that it's scholarship time, seniors. Unless your parents are independently wealthy, we expect you to come by the counselor's office and pick up your forms. Local scholarship forms are ready. Be here, pick them up. We want our kids to win money. The third thing I want to talk to you about, if you are a 9th, 10th, or 11th grader, is that we have handed out to you your academic handbooks for scheduling purposes. When we come in on page seven, we expect to see that you've done work in scheduling for next year. So take care of business. Those of you who will be back next year are students at Red Oak High School, take care of scheduling issues. And the last thing I wanna tell you about is that tax has been rescheduled this year. Because of the election primary on Tuesday, May the 4th, the tax schedule is different. So listen carefully, senior retesters, Monday, March the 3rd, is your social studies test. On Wednesday, that's March the 5th, we will have senior retesters for English. All 10th and 11th graders will take their ELA. And 9th graders, you will take your reading test. Then on Thursday, March the 6th, we will have senior math retesters. And on Friday the 7th, we will have science retesting. So. 
seniors, you have tutorials. You have remediations going on right now. They are mandatory. Be there. We don't mean this in a bad way, but we want you out of here this year. Have a great time. Bye. We've said it many times, but we are truly blessed to have such great academic counselors at Red Oak High School and across the district for that matter. So students, just stop by once in a while to say thanks to our counselors for all the hours they spend keeping us moving towards a successful future. Now, halfway through his freshman year, our West Campus reporter, Chris McClure, continues to bring important information from the West Campus. And this month is no exception. For more from the West Campus, we welcome back Chris in 2008. Happy New Year. Thanks, ladies. Most students turn 15 during their freshman year, and along with that birthday come thoughts of driving. This month, I'm going to give you the information you need to be prepared and get your driver's license next year on your 16th birthday. The first step is getting an instructional permit, which allows teenagers to drive the licensed driver at least 21 years old in the car with them. To get a permit, a person must be at least 15 years old, be enrolled in and attending school, be enrolled in a driver's education program, and pass a written test about driving laws and regulations. Teenage drivers must hold an instructional permit for at least six months before getting a license, so don't wait until the last minute. To prove you're enrolled in and attending school, you can go to the main campus office and ask for an 80-day letter. If you have too many absences, you won't be eligible for this form and won't be able to get a permit until your attendance improves. The state of Texas allows two ways for teenagers to meet the driver's education course requirement. We can attend a state-approved driver's education program or complete a parent-taught program. There are pros and cons with each choice. Driver's ed is more expensive, but many insurance companies give a discount to students who have completed driver's ed. Also, scheduling is sometimes easier with the parent top program, but most driver's ed schools take care of all paperwork and testing, allowing busy students and parents to avoid the long lines at the Department of Public Safety. Each family has to decide which program will best meet its needs. There are state-approved driving schools in both Midlothian and Waxahachie, and information about parent-taught driver's ed can be found at the Texas Department of Public Safety website. And that's what's up at the WC. I'm Chris McClure, Hawkeye News. Back with us now is Hawkeye News reporter Jennifer Terry with information and news on that Mighty Hawk band. Jennifer? Thanks, Katie and Leslie. It is always great to hear about our fellow students who have excelled in their crafts. And band director Mr. Richard Thomas was happy to inform Hawkeye News that we have two students from Red Oak High School who have earned Texas All-State Band Honors this year. Mr. Thomas was beaming with pride as out of thousands of students who began the audition process in December, two Red Oak students were among the elite in the state. The amazing part is that both of these students are only sophomores and both just seem to be getting better and better each year. Congratulations to Sophie Petrochenko, who has made Allstate with the flute, and also to Dylan Toombs, who has been named Allstate once again on the euphonium. Mr. Thomas has stated there is no higher honor for an individual than to make Allstate, and he wanted to stress he's extremely proud of both of these outstanding students. All of us here at Hawkeye News would also like to congratulate Sophie and Dylan on this outstanding accomplishment. And great work also to Mr. Thomas and his band director's staff for leading such a wonderful band program. Reporting for Hawkeye News, I'm Jennifer Terry. Back to you guys in the studio. As we mentioned at the top of the show, this month we started a new extended on-location segment of the Elementary Intermediate Report. Hawkeye News reporter Rosie and Foster will be traveling around the district to visit our elementary and intermediate friends to bring us this segment from a classroom near you. Whose class are you coming from this month, Roseanne? Ladies, this month I join you for Miss Schultz, first grade class here at Wooden Elementary to bring you many stories that came into Hawkeye News around the holidays last month. So with my friends here from Wooden, let's get started with this month's Elementary Intermediate Report. Before winter break, first and fourth grade reading buddies enjoyed listening to Christmas stories read by guest readers. Some of the guest readers included Mr. Bob Selman, Principal of Wooden, Miss Nancy Tony, Counselor, Leanne Brindle and Thumper, and Lynn Grandstaff, a Red Oak ISD board member, plus much more. Also at Wooden Elementary, reading buddies spent time together decorating and eating edible Christmas trees. Older students spend time with younger students throughout the year reading together. 
Also, at Eastridge, students and teachers enjoyed a special pajama day while watching the Polar Express. Eastridge Elementary student scientists investigated the weights of different types of soil in Ms. Patterson's third grade class. And at ROE, fourth grade math teacher Mary Porter uses a hands-on approach teaching her students how to measure weight. Students at Red Oak Elementary are currently learning about and going through a trial run of the different components of the Fitness Gram test. The Fitness Gram is the assessment tool that will be used to test all 3rd through 12th graders this year. This spring, students will be taking the actual test and each student will receive an individual fitness report on their progress. On Tuesday, January 15th, Red Oak Elementary School PTA recognized Wayne Webster, Sharon Graves, and Marilyn Myers for receiving honorary Texas Life memberships. At ROI, Ms. Widget's class, who collected the most box tops, got to play a kickball game against the teachers and staff while their classmates from the Five White Team cheered them on. The staff came out on top with a score of 23-10. Hawkeye News congratulates the ROI staff for winning the kickball game. Many of the children in Ms. Peterson's advanced math class at Red Oak Intermediate love a challenge and they love technology. Thanks to the Raytheon Company, these students are receiving both. Three of Ms. P's students have won prizes this year. Marissa Overton made first alternate at the All-Region Tryouts in November. Marissa was the only sixth grader to try out at the All-Region competition. Also, all of the students who made the alto saxophone section for the band were eighth graders except one student, Red Oak's own Colleen McWilliams. Marissa will in fact be in the All-Region Band. Please congratulate Marissa if you see her. This is a tremendous accomplishment for any student. That will wrap up our first on-location elementary intermediate report, and we look forward to visiting a classroom near you next month. So keep watching, and if you would like us to broadcast from your classroom, email Chief Lindsay. For Hawkeye News, I'm Roseanne Foster. Back to you in the studio. It's time to check back in with our junior high anchor, Ashlyn Jones, to see how things are going at ROJH these days. Welcome back, Ashlyn. Thanks, ladies. As always, things are pretty busy at the junior high, and we welcome back a full team of reporters who will do their best to cover as much news as possible from the junior high in this month's junior high in review. I would like to start it out with a congratulations to Miss Katrina Knight, who has been selected as a Shiro from Region 10. Congratulations, Miss Knight, and to our viewers, stay tuned to Hawkeye News, and we will bring you more on the award ceremony scheduled this year. Now from a great teacher to great students, we go now to Hawkeye News reporter Casey Bird, who will give us some great news on an event held recently to help others. Casey? Thanks, Ashlyn. I wanted to bring our viewers up to date on the cheerleaders helping the homeless. But first, I would like to introduce our audience to this month's Up Close and Personal with our cheerleading sponsor, Ms. Fowler. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Where did you grow up? Palmer, Texas. What university or college did you graduate from? A&M Commerce in Commerce, Texas. What activities did you participate in in either high school or college? Basketball, track, and cheerleading. Did you always want to teach or did you have another career path in mind? I always wanted to teach since I was very little. Have you taught in another district or are you a first year teacher? I taught in Mesquite for three years and this is my first year to work with Red Oak. What classes or sports do you currently teach? I teach 8th grade math and coach 7th and 8th grade cheerleading. Is teaching similar to what you expected or different? I expected teaching to have its up and downs, but I never knew that I would love teaching this much. Do you have any pets? Yes, I have one dog. Her name's Abby. What do you enjoy most about your job? I enjoy working with the kids, enjoy working with the faculty, and everyone just makes it a great place to work for. Is there any other piece of information you would like to share? I would like to share that I like helping out in the community and I wish other people would like to do that at least once a week. Thank you for being here. Thank you. In other news, we've all heard the expression, it is better to give than to receive. And on a rainy afternoon in December, Miss Knight, Mr. Farrell, Miss Fowler, members of One Act, the 8th grade girls basketball team, and some of the cheerleaders were able to experience that expression firsthand. The group traveled to the Dallas Life Foundation where we participated in helping the homeless population. We completed tasks such as busing tables, taking drink orders, scraping trays, preparing food, and also serving on the food line. After mealtime, we went upstairs to the residence quarters and played with the children while their parents attended church service. The children were very thankful as we passed out toys and candy, read to them, played games, and kept them company. 
Ms. Fowler later took the cheerleaders to the Presbyterian Children's Home in Waxahachie to provide community support closer to home. While we were there, we passed out more toys, Christmas cookies, sang carols, and also did some cheers upon request. I feel I can speak for everyone involved when I say that it was a great experience and one that we will soon not forget. Reporting for Hawkeye News, I'm Casey Bird. It's great to be back on Hawkeye News after a long winter break. My partner Wade is on an assignment and will be back in February. This month, I have updates from the world of Red Oak Junior High Sports. The 7th grade girls basketball team is an outstanding group of student athletes. The B team is currently 6 wins and 5 losses with a 5th place plaque in one tournament and a 2nd place plaque in their 2nd tournament. They are 2 wins and 3 losses in the district, but they are hoping to improve that record. The A team is currently 10 wins and 1 loss with a 2nd place plaque in their 1st tournament and a 1st place trophy in their 2nd tournament. There are also 5 wins and 0 losses in the district at press time. 8th grade girls' A team record is 3 wins and 6 losses, and B team is 2 wins and 6 losses. The 8th grade boys' basketball A team overall record counting tournament play is 10 wins and 1 loss, and the A team has 2 first place tournament finishes. B team overall record counting tournament play is 2 wins and 10 losses. B team has a 3rd place finish and a 2nd place finish in tournament. That'll do it for this month, Ashlyn. Wade and I will join you next month for more sports action from Red Oak Junior High. I'm Travis Hancock, Hawkeye News. Now we go to Taylor Anderson for a great story on famous Texans. Welcome back, Taylor. Thanks, Ashlyn. Did you know that on January 11th, approximately 160 famous Texans attended the first annual Famous Texans Celebrity Ball at Red Oak Junior High School? Special guests included William Shoemaker, Imogene Hogg, Lady Bird Johnson, and many others who were introduced to the students during this fall. This project was the creative idea of pre-AP English teachers Becky Strickland, Larry Stevenson, and Marilee Stone. Students were paired up with one another and each pair presented a famous Texan and their press agent. Then the students in these English social studies and science classes spent several weeks researching these famous Texans writing resumes, and creating business cards. The final step in this combined project was the famous Texan Ball, where students were introduced by their press agent to the group and explained their claim to fame. Both the press agent and the famous Texan were in costume and remained in character throughout the ball. Every aspect of the project was created and done by the students. I really enjoyed doing the project and learned a lot about some famous Texans, added seventh grader Cameron Wagner. Thanks to all the teachers who have helped us by bringing us important stories from the junior high. If you have a story idea, you can always let me know or contact our junior high sponsor, Miss Knight. Until next time, I'm Taylor Anderson. Back to you, Ashlyn. Thanks, Taylor, and the whole junior high team. We'll be back next month to bring our Valentine's edition from the junior high. And that's your junior high in review. Thanks, Ashlyn, and we look forward to seeing you next month. With our historic football season now only a memory, Hawk fans turn their attention to a host of spring sports, including basketball and soccer. For more on the Hawks and Lady Hawks teams now making the news, we turn things over to our sports anchor, Zach Toombs. How are things in the sports center, Zach? Thanks, Katie and Leslie. Well, while most students enjoyed a nice long break over the holidays, there are also those who spent a good amount of time on the court and on the field preparing for another busy season. So in this month's report, we'll catch up our viewers on our Hawks and Lady Hawks basketball teams, as well as check in with our dynamic duo of sports who will lace up their cleats to bring us the latest on our soccer teams. In addition, as part of a new segment entitled Five Minutes With, I'll be sitting down with head Hawks football coach Mike Shields in an exclusive interview you won't want to miss. This and much more, all after a word from our sponsor. This month's Hawkeye News Sports is brought to you by Danny Humphreys at State Farm.
Hello, Hawks and Atlanta Hawks sports fans. Let's talk sports. First off, we'll check in with our Hawks basketball teams who are now well into their district schedule. Ranked 10th in the area at the beginning of the season, our varsity Hawks basketball team has faced some tough competition early in the season and at press time sits right in the middle of District 15 4A in fourth place with an 11-3 regular season record and a 3-3 district record. When we left off last month, the team was well into their pre-district schedule and the team opened their district play with a hard-fought loss to the Lancaster Tigers at home. The boys then traveled to Midlothian where they suffered a 65-56 defeat at the hands of the Panthers. However, the Hawks recovered, returning to their home court and taking down Arlington Seguin 76-72, thanks in large part to senior Melvin Johnson, who put up 31 points. The boys repeated their success against Ennis, taking the victory by the score of 59-51 after a fourth quarter rally. Back on their home court, the Hawks took on the Corsicana Tigers. After falling to a 10-point deficit early in the game, the Hawks came back to take the lead in the second half. However, Corsicana hit a three-point shot at the buzzer to send the game into overtime. In an exciting finish, the Hawks nailed two free throws to win the game 75-73. The Hawks now look towards the second half of their district schedule and are no doubt eager to get another shot at some of the district's top teams. We'd like to wish good luck to our boys basketball teams in the weeks to come. But let's not forget our hardworking Lady Hawks varsity basketball team. Like the boys team, the girls got off to a rough start in district, taking losses in their first three contests against Ennis, Corsicana, and Waxahachie. After facing off against Kaufman and Paris in the Kaufman tournament, the ladies jumped back into district competition. After a defeat in Lancaster, Red Oak faced off against the Midlothian Lady Panthers at home and claimed their first district victory by the score of 40-23. The Lady Hawks have since fell to Arlington Seguin, Ennis, and Corsicana in hard-fought matches. By air date, the ladies' season will be winding down, and the team will wrap up their season with a game against district leader Arlington Seguin on February 5th at home. Moving from the hardwood to the turf of Billy Goodloe Stadium, it's now time to go to our dynamic duo of sports, bringing us the latest on the Hawks and Lady Hawks soccer teams. Thanks, Zach. Ryan and I are in a cozy studio while our poor Hawks and Lady Hawks soccer teams are freezing on the field. That's right, Lindsay, and although our Lady Hawks soccer program is once again under the direction of Coach Lori Norrell, the boys are now being led by first-year Red Oak coach Trent Kutch. The district champion Varsity Hawks started off their year with a scrimmage in Adamson against Trinity Christian Academy that resulted in a 1-0 win for the Hawks. In yet another scrimmage, the boys tied Hillcrest 2-2 before suffering a loss to West Mesquite 3-2 in the team's final preseason scrimmage. After a tournament in Alito, the team opened their district schedule at home with a 3-1 win against Lancaster. The Hawks then went on to shut out Cleburne on the road by a score of 5-0 to improve their record to 2-0 on the season. The boys currently sit atop the district and now prepare to face off with some of their tougher competition such as Ennis and Waxahachie. We'll be sure to catch you up on all the Hawks games in the February episode. Coach Kutch feels the team's toughest competition lies with Ennis, Corsicana, and Waxahachie, but he's also confident that the Hawks will rise to the occasion and match the success of years past. But the boys aren't the only ones off to a good start as the Lady Hawks are also preparing to make a run at a district championship repeat. After falling to Midlothian in the regional round of last year's playoffs, the Lady Hawks are back for another year of great soccer. Several members of last year's team have returned this year as seniors, which will only help the ladies' chances as they enter district play. Varsity started off their year with a scrimmage against Garland, which resulted in a 2-2 tie. The team then took on Cedar Hill in their last preseason scrimmage and once again took the victory. Like the boys, the girls' varsity opened their district schedule on January 15th with a game against the Lancaster Tigers and triumphed by the score of 12-0, thanks to a great offensive effort. The girls then played Arlington Seguid and tied 0-0. The girls will soon take on Forney, Ennis, and Waxahachie in games that will take place after press time but before air date. Unlike most of our Hawks sports, our soccer teams compete in District 11-4A, a district that includes Kaufman, Terrell, Forney and Maybank, in addition to more traditional rivals like Waxahachie, Ennis, Corsicana, and Lancaster. Best of luck to our Hawks and Lady Hawks soccer teams in the weeks to come. As for Ryan and me, that about wraps it up for this month. Back to you, Zach. 
Thanks, Lindsay and Ryan. We look forward to hearing more good things about our soccer teams later in the year. I'd now like to welcome you to a new segment on our show called Five Minutes With. Each month I'll be sitting down with a new coach or athlete to give you an inside look on our Hawks and Lady Hawks sports. This month I'm joined by the leader of District 15 4A's co-coaching staff of the year and the head coach of our 4A Region 2 Division 2 champion Hawks football team, Mike Shields. Thank you for being here, Coach. Thank you, Zach. Good Appreciate it. Looking back at the season now more than a month removed from it, what do you feel the players learned from a season as great as this one? Well, I, I hope they learned, and I think everybody did, that if 40 guys and 12 or 13 coaches are striving for the same goal, anything is possible and anything can get done, and, and they sure did it this year. All right, the 2000 season really put Red Oak on the map as far as football. What advantages and disadvantages do you see coming out of the fact that the district now sees the Hawks as a force to be reckoned with? Well, the, the disadvantage is we're not going to sneak up on anybody. You know, a couple of those teams, I think, might have been looking ahead of us and looking to their next game and we jumped on them and, and they didn't know what hit them, that type of deal. Uh, the advantage is now our kids and our football players know that, hey, we can compete with Ennis, Corsicana, and Waxahachie, and any time we step on the football field, we can win the football game. All right, at the beginning of last year, could you even hoped for bringing it to the playoffs? <laughs> no, we, we really went above my expectations even. I was hoping obviously that we win a district game, you know, the first in three or four years. But I thought maybe we could win three of them, the uh, Lancaster, Midlothian, and Arlington Seguin, and then just take our chances and maybe win one of the last two to slip in the playoffs. At what point did you realize that this wasn't just gonna be an ordinary season for Hawks football? When, when we beat Ennis, you know, like I said, I thought there was a slight chance of beating the other three. But once we beat Ennis, who's usually a state perennial power, uh, then we on the on the ride home we said hey you know we may have something here. All right, uh, this is my last question, so we'll see the audience with something to look forward to. What is one thing in particular Hawks fans should be on the lookout for in the upcoming 2008 season? What I want to have happen is have a big game here in Red Oak, and I'm talking about a big crowd from the visitor side, a big crowd on our side, and uh, you know whether it's a sellout or, or you know standing room only that type of deal. That, that everybody can see where we've come from and that how we're competing with everybody. All right, thank you for your time, Coach. Thank you, Zach. And other Red Oak ISD sports news, we're proud to announce the return of the Athletic Zone at www.redoakisdathletics.org. Many hours were spent over the holidays finalizing the new look of the Athletic Zone. The site is being updated daily and is now ready. Find information on game times, locations, scores, news reports, and much more. In addition, you can find important information on our Booster Club. We have lots of new sections on the site, such as the entertainment section, which showcases the awesome support of our sideline and halftime entertainers. New slideshows, season highlights, and more. News blogs and up-to-the-minute scores, stats, and district standings are added weekly. Also, the Coach's Corner will return soon. We are always looking for great news to share about the world of Red Oak ISD sports, and we encourage everyone to submit stories, videos, and ideas. If you see something that needs attention on our site, please let us know how we can help. Portions of the site are still under construction and many sports have not yet come into season. Again, visit the Athletic Zone at www.redoakisdathletics.org. That about does it for this month's sports segment. Before we go, we'd like to congratulate junior Nick Boyd and senior Joffrey Wallace for being named as honorable mentions on the 2007 4A All-State team. As always, we'd like to thank Mr. Burns, Mrs. Kelly, and the Hawks and Lady Hawks coaches for keeping us up to date on all the sports news in the world of Red Oak High School. Until next month, I'm Zach Toombs. Back to you in the studio. Hawkeye News is going on tour in March and April. Members of the Hawkeye News team, including myself and Leslie, will go in a small group to schools around the district to talk to younger viewers about what it's like to be a part of Hawkeye News and what it means to be leadership you can depend on. Teachers who are interested in having the team visit their classrooms have signed up with Chief Lindsay and a schedule will soon be announced to see when Hawkeye News will be coming to your school. For those who have had the Hawkeye News team in your classroom, you can let the others know. But for those who are new, our high school and junior high news reporters come to your school to speak to kids about leadership and then answer questions from the students. We talk about how we produce the show, 
Our news team then signs autographed photos for any of the students who would like them. This year we have a full week planned. We will give each school one day and you can schedule with us a 30 minute time slot during that day. We will have more on the Hawkeye News Tour in next month's show. In cooperation with Danny Humphreys State Farm and m, m Advertising, Hawkeye News is proud to unveil its new billboard for 2008, going up across ROISD this month. Thanks to the support of Danny Humphreys at State Farm Insurance and m, &M Advertising, these billboards will be in rotation over the next six months to spread the word about Hawkeye News and the website address, and so community members and others can catch the show monthly. Danny Humphreys was kind enough to partner with Hawkeye News and donate the billboards. We would like to send our deepest appreciation to State Farm and m, &M Advertising for this joint cooperative effort. Also, coming soon are the new Hawkeye News posters, which will be distributed to all campuses and local businesses. Stay tuned. We welcome back our crime anchor, Lexi Belote, who I understand has some very informative information for this month. And this report is one that many students can't afford to ignore. So turn around in your desks and stop passing those notes in class. You might just learn something that can help save your health. Welcome back, Lexi. Thanks, ladies. You're right. As teenagers, we many times think we know everything. But in doing my research for this month's crime report, I came across some pretty interesting and actually scary news on something many of us do every day, drink energy drinks. Energy drinks are beverages such as Red Bull, Venom, Adrenaline Rush, 180, Rockstar, Sobe, Full Throttle, Cocaine, and Monster. Energy drinks may contain as much as 80 milligrams of caffeine, the equivalent of a cup of coffee, compared to the 37 milligrams of caffeine in a Mountain Dew or the 23 milligrams in Coca-Cola Classic. That's a big punch, and there are dangers and health risks to drinking energy drinks. Individual responses to caffeine vary, and these drinks should be treated carefully because of how powerful they are. Energy drink stimulating properties can boost the heart rate and blood pressure, dehydrate the body, and, like other stimulants, prevent sleep. Energy drinks should not be used while exercising, as the combination of fluid loss from sweating and the diuretic quality of the caffeine can leave the user severely dehydrated. Some of the claims they make, like improved performance and concentration, can be misleading. If you think of them as highly caffeinated drinks, you'll have a more accurate picture of what they are and how they affect you. You wouldn't use Mountain Dew as a sports drink. The combination of energy drinks and alcohol contain a number of dangers. Since energy drinks are stimulants and alcohol is a depressant, the combination of effects may be dangerous. The stimulant effects can mask how intoxicated you are and prevent you from realizing how much alcohol you have consumed. Fatigue is one of the ways the body normally tells someone they have enough to drink. The stimulant effect can give the person the impression they are impaired. No matter how alert you feel, your blood alcohol content is the same as it would be without the energy drink. Both energy drinks and alcohol are very dehydrating. Dehydration can hinder your body's ability to metabolize alcohol and will increase the toxicity and therefore the hangover the next day. Keys to having more energy are having a healthy diet, physical activity, and a good night's sleep. When you need a boost, there are healthier ways than using energy drinks. Energy drinks sound like they would be better than a latte, but a coffee drink made with skim or soy milk is a much better choice. Energizing beverages include sports drinks, fruit juices, water, low-fat milk, and good old-fashioned water. Make sure you are well hydrated because dehydration can lead to fatigue. Fresh and dried fruit, vegetables, cereal, low-fat yogurt, and whole grain breads are just a few of the many nourishing foods that can give you energy. Eat meals every few hours, don't skip meals, and take a good look at your eating and sleeping habits. Take care of your body, it's the only chance you get. Until next month, I'm Lexi Below, Hawkeye News. Back to you ladies in the studio. It has been called one of the most entertaining nights of the year. The Project Success Drug Education Program once again will try to pack the Red Oak High School Cafetorium for this year's 2008 Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant. Joining us now with more information is Hanan Asaley. Hanan? Hello ladies. I hope everyone is ready for a fun-filled night. Make plans to be at Red Oak High School on February 16th for this year's Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant that is shaping up to be one of the funniest in years with a full slate of contestants vying for the crowns this year. But let's kick off first with great news from Mrs. Little and the One Act Play crew. This year, Miss Charla Little is holding one act auditions to be in one of her award-winning plays. She has decided to go for a more humorous play this year instead of her usual genre drama. This year's play is You Can't Take It With You. This play is about a crazy family living in World War II in the 1940s. Mrs. Little has done this show as a fall show many times before and it has always been a favorite. 
The cast will consist of 15 actors, 4 crew members, and 4 alternates. Auditions were held on January 16th and 17th from 2 to 4 in her classroom. If you want more information on One Act or any other theater event, please see Mrs. Little in the theater room on the main campus. Will it be Wooden, Eastridge, Shields, Red Oak Elementary, the Intermediate, Junior High, High School, or Administration who will be the home of the big winners this year? It's time once again for the Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant and all the schools are gearing up. Last year's pageant was one of the best in history, according to pageant chairperson Michelle Border. The pageant is scheduled to feature nine contestants this year. Representing Eastridge Elementary is Mrs. Kim Rogers. Red Oak Elementary is being represented by Mrs. Lori Walton, with Shields representative Sarah Watson, Wooden representative Shirley Todd, and Red Oak High School being represented by Mrs. Rhonda Dolworth. On the men's side, it should also be a great deal of fun as Mr. Marty Farrell represents Red Oak Junior High, Mr. John Hood, Red Oak High School West Campus, Mr. Mark Higginbotham representing Red Oak Intermediate and Assistant Superintendent John Humphrey representing ROISD Administration. While the event is not too serious, it is a lot of fun each year and is talked about for weeks and months following the event. The event is a major fundraiser for the Project Success Drug Education and allows the organization to give thousands of dollars in scholarships to deserving Red Oak High seniors at the end of the year. The theme of this year's pageant is folklore and fairy tales and you can bet students and adults who will attend have a lot to cheer about. Tickets are $5 for adults and only $3 for students, and you can purchase tickets at the door. Several groups will be performing during intermissions from several of our schools. You can come early and enjoy some great CeCe's Pizza beginning at 5.30. The pageant starts at 7 and once again a full house is expected, so come early and enjoy the 2008 Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant, Saturday, February 16th at the Red Oak High Cafetorium. Reporting for Hawkeye News, I'm Hanani Saley. Thanks, Hanan. Well, that about does it for our January show. We look forward to bringing you much more next month in our Valentine edition of Hawkeye News. We also wanted to remind you that we would really love to hear from you. So if you have any news ideas, comments, or suggestions, you can write to us at hawkeyenews at redoakisd.org or give us a call at 469-437-6837. And don't forget to check us out 24-7 at www.hawkeye-news.com if you missed any of our reports or need more information on the Hawkeye News team. I'm Katie Stanglin. And I'm Leslie Rangel. Until next time, thanks for watching. And make it a great day.